Hello friends, welcome to Game It Up. My name is Dave and this is a review of a game called Super Sean 007. Before we get started, a big thank you to our new and returning subscribers. If you want to join the party, hit that subscribe button below, we'd love to have you on board. I noticed this game while scrolling through the coming soon section on the Switch eShop. Those who know me will know exactly why this would catch my eye. When I see the title, Super Sean 007, I immediately think of this guy. I am a huge James Bond fan, which is the same reason The Spy Who Shot Me caught my eye as well, and that was a very enjoyable game. But just one look at Super Sean 007, and there didn't seem to be anything James Bond related about it, but hey, it looked like a cutesy platformer, might be worth a try. I was very kindly supplied with a code for this game, thank you very much to the publisher, so let's see what I thought of it. This is going to be a tricky one to review. I can't actually supply you with a proper review. What I'm going to do instead is show you essentially highlights of my playtime with this game and tell you of my experience. So first and foremost, what is this game about? You take control of Sean, who you discover during a completely silent opening cutscene, has a friend who's being kidnapped by an evil bald wizard. Yes, that's what the game refers to him as. Sean then enters a portal into the game's mesmerising world. That's the way the eShop describes it anyway. So while we're here, what does the eShop say about this game? Players will defeat various types of enemies. Well, yes, you certainly do, but more on that in a bit. Players will go through the levels until all the main quest requirements in that level are finished. Well, if all the main quest requirements are just getting to the end of the level, then okay, that's true as, as far as I know. Then after those two bullet points, we have a third one labelled additions. Players are able to go back to the previous level if they are willing to finish the side quests through the teleport points. Well, it is true you can replay levels, but side quests? I didn't really see anything about them in the game itself, but um, let, let's, get on with, let's get on with what I saw. From what I can tell, it's just a standard run-of-the-mill platformer, but your character moves so slowly. You can hold the Y button to run, but it's still not that fast. B is to jump, which doesn't feel very satisfying, and X is to interact, which the only thing I have found that working on is the exit to each level. The triggers are to swing your sword. There are enemies in the levels that attack you, and you simply swing the sword to beat them. There is not real satisfaction in the combat, I just found all I could do was swing wildly until I won, or just jump over them and carry on. The enemies were giant bugs, which was a nice idea, but the sound effects from them were pretty much the same between different species, and attacking and defeating them was lacking any feeling of impact, leaving it a very flat experience. Maybe I was just in a bad mood when I reached the first enemies, because by that early point, my eyes were hurting from just how jittery the background was when I was moving. It's a shame as I didn't mind the simplistic cartoony design of the world, but in motion it just seemed to struggle, whether that was in docked or handheld mode. The music on the other hand was nice and whimsical and I quite enjoyed the tune playing, even though there was too long of a silence between each time the track looped. And there was a severe lack of certain sound effects. For example, there'd be times a door would be in my way, and I would have to smack it repeatedly until it smashed. There were no sound effects whatsoever of the door in this. There was just the usual sound of your sword swinging against air. The doors don't even smash, they just blink a bit and then vanish. Things like this just make the game feel cheap. So you get to navigate these levels at a snail's pace with some boring combat with enemies, but what about the platforming? Oh dear. There are your typical pits to jump, which always felt a bit like luck to me for various reasons. First of all, I mentioned how slow you move. Well, the jumps don't feel like I have much control and I can't move very far in the air. So it feels like I only just make the jumps. Secondly, the camera placement. There are times where I have to jump downwards, yet the camera won't show me what's below. Even times where I'm moving downhill, the camera will still keep me at the very bottom of the screen so I don't know what I'm running into. 
but it especially got annoying at this part, where there is a moving platform below me, but I can't time my jump as I can't see that moving platform. When you walk up the hill towards it, the camera is in the right place so I can see it, but if I was to jump while up here, the camera pans up, but then doesn't pan down when I land. So why don't I just stand still and only jump when I see that moving platform's in place, I hear you all ask. Well, I need to jump here because there's a fly shooting stuff at me. So I kill the fly, which was annoying enough because it wouldn't bloody come near me, then walk back down the hill to the left to move the camera downwards, and then walk back up to the right. There is a checkpoint up here too, but if you die and respawn there, the camera is placed too high to see the moving platform, so they have that intended as a default camera placement if you respawn here. What is going on? But I'm getting ahead of myself here, there are a lot more things that annoyed me with this. Checkpoints are scattered throughout the game, but it seems you have only a limited number of lives before you get a game over. I say it seems to be, because the game doesn't display a life count, so when I'm walking along and all of a sudden it says game over because I walked into something I had no idea I couldn't walk into because it didn't look like a hazard, and there are also times where the foreground cover up the pits. There are boss fights in this game, well, only one boss fight I've actually seen at the end of World 1. The combat just consisted of me just standing inside it and swinging aimlessly until one of us won, and I did win uh, in, in zero seconds apparently. I rescued a friend where they had an exchange of words, and the game kept on skipping dialogue boxes despite me pressing A once, so I'm sorry I can't tell you the full story here. This person acts as a power-up of sorts. You can presumably collect four of these people in the game, used by pressing the direction and the d-pad. This one I unlocked gives you five whole seconds of faster movement and further jumps. Then you have to wait a bit for it to recharge. Oh goody! So I can have the game control in a playable way for five seconds at a time now? <laughs> You're spoiling us! So you heard me say things like presumably four power-ups and like I've only seen one boss fight. Why is this? I'm going to be completely honest here. I haven't played past the fifth level of this game. This is why this isn't a proper review. I got to this point here where I have to jump up these moving platforms, and I can't jump high enough to land on this one. I've tried so many times and wasted more time than I'd like to admit attempting this. Taking a leap of faith to the right does nothing. I have no idea if I'm even supposed to be going this way or not, but the levels are linear, so it must be. But I don't know if there's even a way to lower it further. I mean, if there are any other mechanics other than the ones I've mentioned in this game, the game does nothing to tell me about it. Earlier on, I said the blurb mentioned some side quests. Is that something to do with it? I have no idea, because the game's not telling me about any of this. Maybe if the game played better, I would have made more time with this, but... I knew this was time for me to jump off. Overall, this game just feels like a cheap, unfinished mess, and they're asking for £8.99 for this. I don't wish to be harsh on the game, but outside of the music, which is quite nice, I can't think of anything good to say about it. It's boring to play, it controls horribly, there's a lot of cheap deaths, bad level design, and they have the audacity to slap the number 007 on the title for absolutely no reason but to make it stand up. This game represents what's wrong with the eShop. I'm sorry, I don't like being this negative about games, but even the worst ones I've played I always try to be diplomatic about, but... This is possibly the worst game I've played on the Nintendo Switch. The only enjoyment I got was when I suddenly burst into laughter over how terrible some moments were. I hate to leave a game so soon, which is why I said at the start that this cannot be a proper review, just a recount of my experience of this game. But from what I've played and seen, I just cannot recommend this to anyone. But that's just me. Maybe I'm just missing something here and the game is secretly brilliant. See, I can be diplomatic. But let me know in those comments down below what, what Nintendo Switch games have made you feel this frustrated and regret your purchase. And make sure you subscribe to this channel if you want to see more from us in the future. Hopefully it'll be a better game next time. See you in the next one everyone.